Oh, meow, meow, kitty. <laughs> Man, she is really loving on that cat. Yeah. You think she'll ever show me that much affection? Maybe if you had whiskers and fish breath. Bro, you went full cat? Oh, what is happening? I'm not gonna lie, you obsessing over Starfire to the point where you'll literally turn into a cat is getting a little annoying and repetitive. Robin pretends to be a cat so that he can get Starfire's attention. There were a few chuckle-worthy moments here and there, more specifically the moment they referenced Garfield. Sassy pants? <sighs> Mondays. <laughs> It's kind of humorous that Robin's plan to get Starfire to pay attention to him actually worked. And I think it's nice that Raven, Cyborg, and Beast Boy try to help her. But it's... Eh. Check these meaty biceps, mama. They're just so juicy. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? This show is so fucking weird sometimes, and not even enjoyably weird like Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Just what the fuck am I watching? Weird. <laughs> WTF did I just watch? After losing a fight, Raven trains the Titans so that they can have strong legs like her. I guess this one has some pretty decent animation, specifically when the Titans start using their legs to take down the enemies. It's an okay episode overall, although throughout the entire episode, I just have this odd feeling that somebody in the writer's room really loves legs. The Titans get rid of their permanent teeth so that they can get some money from the Tooth Fairy. What do we have here? Ow! 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 Stop it! Your tooth has a cavity. It needs to be removed. Dude, you gotta pop that toothy tooth out of your face so you can get some of that good money from the Tooth Fairy! I'm not trading my tooth for a couple dirty nickels! Bro, didn't you hear? The Tooth Fairy's got that paper money now! Paper money? She can have all my teeth! These characters are supposed to be teenagers, right? And like in every other episode before this one, Raven tries to warn them and of course, they don't listen. So this results in Raven having to fight the Tooth Fairy so they can get their teeth back. Ew, what are you guys doing? We all got keys. But we need more of the spending money. Can we just have a couple of your teeth, Mama? We can pay you back in hair and toenails. Oh, gross. I can't stand this episode, it's so gross. But I will admit, the first and second half of the episode is not all that bad, because it's just Cyborg, Robin, Starfire, and Beast Boy losing teeth. But then we get to an awful ending where Raven and the Tooth Fairy end up eating teeth. Whoa. Really good. Mm, mm, mm. Ew. But I guess the episode does teach a valuable lesson about taking care of your teeth, I guess. Still, it's a gross episode. As Robin says it best, Disgusting. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Haven't you guys heard? Looks don't matter. What? Is that true? Would people say it if it wasn't? Oh, how wonderful. This show is going to give us a lecture on beauty. That's like going to Amber Turd for relationship advice. Go fuck yourself. After learning that real beauty is on the inside, uh, Beast Boy decides to metamorphosize. Seriously, what the fuck? And what do you know? He turns into a gross abomination thing. But the Titans try not to judge. The only funny part of the episode is when Killer Moth gets called a jerk because he just says it how it is. Wait, are you saying looks don't matter? 
That's like walking into a stinky bathroom and saying, smells don't matter. They do. They really do. Even though the constant gag of the Titans throwing up gets old really quick. And I will admit, there's a nice twist at the end where it turns out that the creature that looked like Beast Boy was actually Silky's friend. And even though the Titans are disgusting insects, Beast Boy still wants to be friends with them regardless. So I'll give this episode a 6 for that. Even though it's a basic lesson that everybody knows at this point. But I'll give credit where credit is due. What'd they say, Mama? They're saying... Ah, we're hungry for food. Ah. I guess that's a nice throwback to Smile Bones. Beast Boy, Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire start eating spicy foods. And despite Robin's warnings, they continue to keep eating spicy foods until eventually they can't handle the heat anymore. Didn't see that one coming, did ya? I feel like Benson's Weekend and Penguin Zero's Testing Hot Peppers video does this way better. But for what it is, I think it's fine. It's the typical Robin warning the Titans not to do something stupid, and they proceed to do it anyway. I'm so tired. I'm so tired of all of this. But I'm going to say the last third of this episode is particularly annoying because the Titans spend the rest of the episode screaming. I mean, after all, they ate a hot pepper, so I don't, I don't know what I was... The episode ends with a message that you should stay in the middle when it comes to your spices and bland food. Which the Titans don't approve of. That sounds reasonable. Oh, there's a musical number in here too. But it's it's fine, I guess. I, I don't really have much to say about it. <gasps> what is going on here? Uh, we're just reading. Reading? Not on this beautiful day! You're all going outside! Now! Shut up, Robin. Jesus, you're so annoying. May we first finish the chapters? No need. I can tell you how all your books end. Like this! Ow! Why? Very nice. You're such a dick. You're such a dick! The Titans are stuck inside because it's raining. And instead of reading like they were doing before, Robin decides to ruin that by having them do indoor activities because that will stop the clouds from crying. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. Robin's justification for why it rains is because the clouds are crying. And the worst part is that the other Titans believe him. <gasps> the clouds are sad? Why didn't you tell us, bro? We have to cheer them off! Whatever it takes. Why is everyone so fucking stupid? Ugh, another fine episode. But the best part of the episode for me is when the villains come together to do the Heads Up 7-Up game, which was pretty fun to watch. And I will admit, Robin constantly persuading the characters with chocolate milk was pretty funny too. Fine, leave. I just don't know how I'm going to drink all this chocolate milk by myself. Maybe this will change your mind. Yeah! <laughs> Another great moment was the ending. Since the Titans love the indoor activities so much, they decide to provoke the clouds so that it can rain again, which results in the clouds trying to kill the Titans. Please kill everyone. So to calm the clouds down, they need to do the spaghetti dance, something that Robin has been begging the Titans to do throughout the episode. What spaghetti without a meatball? It's a decent episode, but that's only because of the ending. It's time to go back to school! Excuse me? I'm just as confused as you are, Star. You guys go to school? That's where you adopt the identity that will define you for the rest of your life and crane kick your karate rival from the evil dojo while falling in love with Elizabeth Shue. Dude, we're awesome teenagers with no parents. We can do whatever we want anytime. Why would we give that up? Yeah, I agree with Cyborg on this one. I thought the whole point of being a teenager with superpowers means you don't have to go to school. I stand corrected. You know, time to demonstrate the, the, the skill. I was wrong. 
Bad example. The Teen Titans go back to school. Why? So Robin can relive his fantasies. That's why. He wants to beat up a bully, become school president, and become a valedictorian. God, I hope I pronounced that right. I'm not a big fan of this episode. The character that made this unbearable to watch was Robin. I thought Cyborg, Beast Boy, Raven, and Starfire were pretty tolerable for the most part. But Robin? Jesus, he made this unbearable to watch. Man, we've been here five minutes and you already got us in detention? Well... When I see a bully, I take him down. <laughs> no regrets. You're such a dick! He becomes so obsessed with fulfilling his goals that he does some of the stupidest shit imaginable. Such as kicking Beast Boy's ass for no reason, becoming obsessed with the labels that he gave the Titans, walking around in his underwear for half of the episode, and beating the living shit out of the Titans because he didn't get valedictorian. You know what, I fucking hate that word. I'm, I'm tired of reading I thought the concept was pretty interesting, but this jackass really made it unbearable to watch. I go down for one second and you guys just freeze up? Decisions are hard. That is why we let you make them for us. Are you serious? Nine times out of ten, you fuckheads do whatever you want. You rarely ever listen to Robin. You wankers! You total, total wankers! I've wasted my life hanging around with you fucking morons! I fucking hate you! Fuck off! For some reason, the Titans, excluding Robin, are so stupid to the point where they can't make their own decisions, so they start relying on fortune cookies to tell them what to do. Another episode I don't like because, as I said multiple times, characters being dumb is not funny to me. I mean, the Titans are not the brightest bulbs on the chandelier, but they're not this brain-dead retarded to the point where they can't make up their own decisions. Another weak episode. Moving on. Another episode that insults the fans and critics of the old show. Classy. This show was supposed to be my greatest achievement. It was supposed to bring me awards and the respect of the entertainment industry. Instead, everyone thinks it's garbage! Well, someone's clearly upset. Control Freak shows up and threatens the Titans that if the Teen Titans Go show doesn't get any better and win him an award, he'll reboot them. Much like Return of Slade, this episode serves as a big middle finger to both the fans and the critics. They spend the entire episode trying to be highbrow, but obviously they don't do it properly. I do say, did you hear the news about the election? You'll have to speak up. I'm listening to the current exit polls concerning the election. <laughs> Would you care for a pair? A pair of what? <laughs> Would you stop? And when the Titans aren't trying to switch up their style, they just spend the entire episode making fourth wall breaking, observational, self deprecating humor. People are watching us without our permission? Ew. What a bunch of creeps. Creeps! The creeps! You fools be creepy! These Teen Titans were about character development, drama, and heart! I used to be so much cooler! <laughs> what? That's how it ends? And there is no sixth season to resolve the plots hanging from the cliff? You ended that show? You monster. If we're going to play Control Freak's demented game, it's time to lose the lowbrow humor, which means no more dookie jokes. We do smart people comedy from now on. Animation is created by countless talented animators laboring day and night to create the illusion of life. And in our case, they're doing a terrible job. You see, that right there, that would make me laugh my ass off. But the problem is that media has been doing this for years now. So when this show does it, it's nothing special. And even though the show switches up its style in the last third of the episode, going as far as not making fart jokes and switching up the animation style, the characters have come to a consensus that they're going to stay the same regardless. Reboot us if you want, control freak. But we are proud of who we are and what we represent. And we are not changing any of that based on your evil whims. We are the Teen Titans! We're in the club getting busy! No, you're not. 
you're a dollar store version of something greater. And that's the biggest reason why people hate your show. Because you're actively shitting all over a previously established series. You're like every single Disney live action remake that's being made right now. Making unnecessary changes, putting a half-assed job into your work, and the second people criticize you for it, you act passive-aggressive. Here's one request. If you're not going to improve your show, then don't make episodes like this. Just stick to your one fucking job and continue to be shit. That's what every single irrelevant YouTuber does. Trashy episode. Moving on. Wow, it's funny how we go from a bottom tier garbage episode to arguably this show's best episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mindfuck. Cyborg has been listening to this song called The Night Begins to Shine, but the Titans think he's a little too obsessed with it. Easily the best episode in the entire series so far. <laughs> <laughs> Not that any other episode has a chance of beating this one. Not a chance in hell. The music is very good, the characters aren't annoying, jerkish, or unlikable in this one, and the biggest pro of this episode is the animation. Oh my god if they're actually making a spin-off show using the same animation style i'll watch it the colors the backgrounds the character designs it looks fantastic i would say the animation is on par with the original teen titans the fight scenes in this one are pretty solid too especially when cyborg turns into motherfucking optimus prime impossible music will transform I'm going to come! Ah! You know what? I think the creators of this show should take some notes. Just because you're making a kid's show doesn't mean you have to put together some half-baked piece of garbage. You can put effort into your show. You can make something special and unique. Just like this episode, for example. Are there some criticisms of this episode? Only one. I think the night begins to shine starts to overstay its welcome a little bit, but the music is so good that it doesn't even matter. So yeah, an outstanding episode. Too bad we won't get high quality art like this consistently. For sooth, my ladies, I have tales to tell. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Guards do not pee me their pants. They tell stories that instill morals and character. Isn't that what you always do anyway? And you never listen. So, I'm engaging in these theatrics to trick you into learning. I don't know why you're wasting your time. These fucking jackasses won't listen. Robin tells a bunch of fairy tale stories in the hopes of getting the Titans to learn a lesson. This episode reminds me of that Family Guy episode that had a similar concept. It's a classic retelling of fairy tale stories with Teen Titans Go characters. And because Cyborg, Beast Boy, Raven, and Starfire are douchebags, they add unnecessary spins to these stories instead of letting Robin handle it. Out of the three, I think Raven's is probably the funniest, mainly because she turns Rapunzel into a badass girl boss in the end. But the other two were weak. And the last one bothers me specifically because, why is Starfire telling this story? You're an alien. You wouldn't know jack shit about Little Red Riding Hood. A mediocre episode, moving on. Don't you see, Titans? You are the real menace to Jump City. Well, it's about damn time somebody called them out for this bullshit. Brother Blood puts the Teen Titans on trial and tries to prove to everyone in Jump City that they are the real villains. Is it kind of bad that I'm rooting for Brother Blood to win? Yes. Yes, it does. 
A pretty decent episode, all things considered. Seeing the Teen Titans be put on trial was pretty interesting, and it does confirm that they are technically the villains of the series, despite labeling themselves as the good guys, because 9 times out of 10, they cause property damage and destruction anywhere they go, they've committed multiple crimes on more than one occasion, and the biggest crime they've committed? They're just really annoying. SHUT THE HELL UP! And guess what? The episode doesn't let them get away unscathed. Despite Robin's best attempts, they still get labeled as guilty by the brain. A fucking banger episode in my opinion. The Titans get their Halloween party interrupted by the Hive. After they destroy a candy factory and kill the Teen Titans on top of that, A lot of creepy stuff starts to occur at Hive Tower, then it turns out that the Teen Titans have turned into ghosts, and they plan to ruin the Hive's Halloween party. Ain't karma a bitch? I think this is just like the High Five episode done right. You see, what makes the Titans torturing the Hive justified is that the Hive actually does something to them first. They ruin their Halloween party, and they destroy the candy factory, so they have every single right to ruin their party. And what's shocking about this episode is that there are actually funny moments. I'm not kidding. Here are some of my favorites. Going down. What do you want? To show you the true meaning of fear, Jinx. Prepare yourself for an awkward elevator ride. <laughs> Whoa, check me out. Hey, bro, where's all the chicks at? Who gives the care? My only interests are the good times and the sports. That's what I'm talking about, dog. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Your resistance to social awkwardness is impressive. But tell me, how do you feel about... And the episode has a pretty nice ending where it turns out that both teams had a good Halloween together, which I thought was pretty nice. And then they cap it off with the scary figure dance. This episode was both enjoyable and funny. Well, it's got 54 gig. I said do not touch that! I wasn't! Yeah, you were. You got me, mama. I was gonna touch it. You know how cats be. Raven, just use your powers to pull his ass out of there. Oh, you stupid son of a- After nearly killing his friends by pushing a button that they specifically told him not to push, Jesus Christ, Beast Boy is so stupid. Fucking idiot. In order to save the Titans, Beast Boy replaces the blood that they've lost with his own blood, which gives the other Titans the ability to transform into animals. The very concept of this episode reminds me of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. There's a plot in that movie where Harry Osborn needs Spider-Man's blood because he thinks Spider-Man's blood can cure him. He was bitten by one of those things and it worked. I don't know how, and I don't know why, but... He can do everything else a spider can, including self-heal. What are you talking about? What? So goddamn retarded. As for this episode, apart from Beast Boy being so goddamn retarded, I guess the concept of the Titans turning into animals makes for an interesting episode, I guess. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of lowbrow comedy in here. <laughs> Good bouquet going on there, Sai. Motor oil and... Ooh, is that a hint of meatball? <laughs> it is. Hmm, not bad. Woo! Doggy, I could sniff butts all day! But there were some jokes in here that I thought were pretty decent. More specifically, the Titans wanting to turn back into animals. It's an okay episode. It's Beast Boy's birthday, and the other Titans don't care. No, I'm not kidding. They really don't care. We did not do the forgetting. Yeah, dude, we knew it was your birthday. Then why didn't you treat me like I'm the center of the universe? 
Because other people's birthdays are so boring. Awkwardly singing that birthday song. The eating of the cake with the spittle and the candle waxes upon it. <laughs> and they have the nerve to call each other friends. That's fucking bullshit! Because they didn't celebrate his birthday, Beast Boy's age starts to go all over the place. He turns from an old man to a baby to middle age. You get the idea. So the only way to get him back to his normal age is to bring him to the center of the universe to celebrate his birthday. This episode goes to show that these characters don't give a shit about each other. Seriously, they couldn't take the time out of their day to celebrate Beast Boy's birthday. And the only reason why they're celebrating his birthday is out of necessity. But at the very least, the ending of the episode is pretty interesting. Especially when they get to the center of the universe. Sorry I forgot your birthday, Beast Boy. You're, you're, just, you're just so much bullshit. You're fake as hell. I don't know why you're pretending to care. At the beginning of the episode, you literally said this. I totally forgot it was your birthday. You guys should have told me. Uh, you're the only one who really cares about me, Ray Ray. No. I don't care about you. There are cosmic consequences to forgetting someone's birthday. Raven, if you're going to be an uncaring bitch, at least have the decency to be consistent with it. The Teen Titans are getting ready for Black Friday, but Starfire doesn't feel like partaking in it. So as a result, a ghost version of Robin, Cyborg, Beast Boy, and Raven try to get her to appreciate Black Friday, similar to A Christmas Carol. Well, let's be honest, how bad is the damage here? Let's find out! Yeah, I really don't like this episode because it seems to paint Starfire as the bad guy for not wanting to celebrate Black Friday. But I don't blame her. She gives a perfectly reasonable explanation for why she doesn't want to partake in Black Friday. I cannot participate in the Black Friday this year. I do not care for it. The waiting in line, the elbows, the buying of the unnecessary items. I think she's right. But then the episode is like, oh, you are so wrong for this. Going off memory from A Christmas Carol, the reason why Ebenezer Scrooge had to deal with the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future was that he wasn't appreciating Christmas, and he was an absolute asshole on top of that. While Starfire doesn't appreciate Black Friday, she doesn't act like a jerk to her friends. So they copy the story without understanding the basics of the story, and on top of that, they give out a shitty moral. Gotcha. But I'll give this episode credit that it's not as bad as the next holiday special we're going to talk about. Titans! Can you feel it? No, and I don't think I want to. Well, I can. Something in the air is telling me today is special. Wow, you guys are finally getting a 20-minute special, huh? Too bad regular show in Adventure Time beat you to the pun. For the first part of this two-parter, the Teen Titans go to the Hall of Justice to do something because it's a special event. I mean, they say it like 24 times in this part alone. Special! 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 Special event, if you will. It'll be special. Special! And that was not special at all. It's special! <laughs> this does not feel like the special event yet. Pools can be pretty special. This could be special! I got to cool off, and I know it's a special place to do it. Special! Please stop saying special. This is special! Since today is so special! Now this truly is a special, special, special event. We are filling lots of time, which is special! This is special! I told you today was a special event. You know what that means. Special! The only thing the characters do in this part is fuck around in the Hall of Justice. They even dress up as certain members of the Justice League. God, this episode has more filler than across the Spider-Verse. In fact, this episode reminds me of the Sidekick episode. Not much happens in this part and the only thing the Titans do is mess around until they eventually realize that the Justice League has been captured by Darkseid, which is where the next part comes into play.
For the second part, the Teen Titans decide to go rescue the Justice League from Darkseid. If there's one thing I will admit, it's that unlike the first part, this part actually gets things going. They actually meet the Justice League and Darkseid on top of that. This part is better than the first part, no doubt, but it still has the same potty humor as the first. Where's Martian Manhunter? Still in the invisible John, bro. Can you at least shut the door? It is shut, see? <laughs> But, hey, they at least tried to do something with the second part. I mean, that's that's got to count for something, I guess. And if there's one thing I like, it's that Darkseid doesn't get taken down like a bitch. Well, he does get taken down by Cyborg, but whatever. It's a decent two-parter. Remember when I said the Black Friday episode had a bad moral? Well, guess what? This episode tops that episode by a wide margin. What the fuck? After three years of getting no presents, the Teen Titans have come to the conclusion that they're on Santa's naughty list, so they do everything in their power to see if they're on the naughty list for sure. And by that, I mean they do even more horrific acts. This episode regurgitates the same joke at nauseum. The Teen Titans are too stupid to realize that the reason they're on the naughty list is for their terrible behavior. We're sick of not getting Christmas presents. It's been three years and not one gift. What are we, animals? How do you expect us to enjoy Christmas? Yeah, they're saying all this shit after Cyborg framed an innocent elf, Beast Boy bullies and drives away Rudolph, Raven and Starfire ate the gingerbread man and his cat, and Robin blew up his workshop. I know some people will say, hey, that's the joke, man. Don't take it too seriously. Here's the problem. It's not funny. It's like, where's the fucking joke? You know, <laughs> like, give me a joke in there. <laughs> and what makes this episode worse is that Santa Claus gets rid of the naughty list altogether after the Titans made him realize what Christmas is all about. And apparently, Christmas is all about presents. Ew. Christmas is about something much more important. What? Presents. Ah, don't you see, Kyle? Yeah, presents. Yeah, this episode has a shitty-ass moral. It basically teaches kids that if somebody is punishing you for doing bad deeds, then be even worse and you'll get exactly what you want. Fuck this episode and fuck these five fuckfaces. Dude, they got Gumball and Darwin and Teen Titans Go? What the f- After a squirrel eats their nuts, the Titans decide that they want revenge on the little bastard. But after giving us a lecture on cartoon violence, the Teen Titans become even more cartoony than they were before. I thought that shit was possible! I'm gonna sound crazy for saying this, but I really like this episode. Most importantly, I like how the show transforms its art style so it can be reminiscent of Looney Tunes and Voltron. Granted, it's not on par with Looney Tunes and Voltron, but it's still pretty good for what it is. And I managed to get a few good laughs out of the violence that these characters endured. It's a solid episode overall. Remember that time? Oh, I remember. Do you remember what you said? I remember. Do you remember when we were remembering the remembrance? Can you fucking jackasses just get to the point and stop wasting time? You know, if you guys plan on marathoning this series, you should play a drinking game on how many times these characters say a singular word multiple times. Trust me, you guys will be dead. Oh man, you remember this? The legendary sandwich! Yeah, I know. It was like 125 episodes ago. Jesus Christ, time flies. After making numerous callbacks, Robin suggests that the Titans should sell this crap, claiming that they're too focused on the past instead of focusing on the present. I will admit the Titans walking down memory lane as they look back at their previous episodes was pretty nice, but the story is the same regurgitated shit that this show has been doing for the past three years now. I had no idea this garden existed. 
Yes, it was my secret place to escape the stresses. Then why did you tell me about it? I trust you, friend Cyborg. Then I promise to make sure no one ruins the peace and quiet of the sanctuary. This is probably the second most quiet the show has ever been. Holy damn. What the fuck? Cyborg is freaking out, so Starfire takes him to her secret garden so he can chill out. I was enjoying this episode at first, mainly because aside from the first couple of minutes and the later half, the middle portion of the episode is very quiet and softly spoken. I haven't mentioned it up to this point, but the voice actors can get kind of unbearable, especially when they have to scream all the time. So I appreciate this episode a little bit. Not to mention, I think the garden itself is pretty well designed. But then the episode ruins it by having Beast Boy, Robin, and Raven enter the secret garden as well, which leads to Starfire losing her shit. And then eventually this leads to the other three losing their shit as well. I come to the garden to escape them! You know what's funny? I think you're the most annoying character out of everybody in the bunch, so you should SHUT THE FUCK UP! Okay, despite me being very cynical towards this episode, I think it teaches a nice lesson of just trying to relax whenever you're stressed. So, good job. Dude, LeBron James? Are you serious? You're telling me he was both in Space Jam 2 and in this show? Jesus Christ, this man can't catch a break. But please, don't let this be another piece of media that's just gonna jerk off LeBron James's ego. The Teen Titans go to see LeBron James at an amusement park, but when no one else shows up to the event, they try to get down to the bottom of this. This whole episode is essentially a Scooby-Doo parody, and let me tell you, they've nailed it down to a T. There's a mystery the group tries to solve, there's an unnecessary cameo by a celebrity, you've got two cowards who are scared of monsters, you have a nerd with glasses, you've got a laugh track in the background, and it takes place at an amusement park. Kind of reminds me of that South Park Halloween episode that did the same thing. But hey, I'll give this episode this. It does a better job of capturing the spirit of Scooby-Doo than Thelma ever did. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah. It's code for adults who still watch... Shut the f*** up! <laughs> And what a day. Hi, honey. Mwah. Okay, that was pretty sweet. It's Valentine's Day, which means Cyborg and Jinx plan to do something special. But after Cyborg messes it up, he decides to go on a dangerous quest to get Jinx a perfect gift, a flower, and some chocolate. I didn't expect myself to like this episode, but I like it. And I think it's because Jinx and Cyborg make a great couple. And I like how Cyborg was willing to sacrifice an arm for her. <laughs> I think it goes to show how deep their love is, you know? And I kind of chuckled at Gizmo being treated like a baby. A pretty decent Valentine's Day special. It's just... I, I can't afford the birthday present Cyborg really wants! Wait, haven't we been through this before? I have to get a job so I can afford the expensive present Cyborg wants. Let me guess, Beast Boy, you're going to get a job at the pie shop. I ain't getting a job at the pie shop. <laughs> okay, I think it's pretty funny that they're referencing the Pie Bros episode. Ew, no way. Hard labor is for criminals and pregnant ladies. But if you live on the top with the mummy, you can get rich. Okay, so they're ripping off two episodes in one. Beast Boy joins a pyramid scheme because he wants to get Cyborg something for his birthday. <clears throat> and despite Robin's many warnings, again, the other Titans join in on the pyramid scheme as well. Again. 
And the next thing you know, they owe their boss money. And when they don't have enough, all of them, including Robin, end up being slaves. <sighs> Another basic episode. They took the setup of Pie Bros and copied every other episode of Robin trying to warn the Titans that what they're doing is stupid, and they follow through on the plan anyway. I will admit the mummy being at the top of the pyramid was pretty funny, the final fight was pretty cool, and I thought the Rich song was pretty decent. But even then, it's another basic episode. Moving on. You are participating in a fraudulent business. What you need is honest work, hard labor. I am not the prisoner, bang bang. And I'm no pregnant woman. We are cowboys, hombre. Dear Jesus Christ. I would expect this kind of thing from Cyborg and Starfire, but you, Raven? <laughs> Well, I guess I shouldn't be shocked because you can be pretty stupid in some of these episodes. Why would you all think I'm a leprechaun? Because you're... Uh, I'm not short. You're pretty short. Beast Boy is shorter than I am. I do not believe the so. I should be shocked by how retarded they are. But honestly, after three seasons and 100 episodes, I just don't care anymore. I really don't care. After the Teen Titans pinch Beast Boy on St. Patrick's Day, they get hit with bad luck. And the only way they can get uncursed is by going over a rainbow and finding a leprechaun's pot of gold. It's okay. I thought the bad luck song was pretty catchy. Seeing the Teen Titans get hurt is always hilarious. All I got these days is bad luck. All I got is bad luck. I got these days back. <laughs> no way! And this episode made me realize something. Every single villain is voiced by either Cyborg's voice actor or Robin's voice actor. Don't you be touching me, butter gold! So where's the wife? Tell a sad, sad tale. She left me. And I thought the pinch fight at the end between Robin and the Leprechaun was pretty funny. And it kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Z. This is especially funny considering the Titans constantly call Robin a leprechaun multiple times throughout the episode. After realizing that the Easter Bunny hasn't laid any Easter eggs, or Easter baskets for that matter, the Teen Titans try to find the Easter Bunny. They even go as far as asking the other mascots of the holidays. A pretty decent Easter special. It had a few funny moments, this one being the best. Please, do you really think your love arrows will have an effect on us? I mean, look at Cyborg. He's so big and so strong. Pause. And the episode does have a nice twist where it turns out that Santa Claus has been kidnapping the mascots of the holidays so that Christmas can be the only holiday that everybody celebrates. It's funny, they've turned Santa Claus into a villain. It's too bad that American Dad beat them to it. Don't let the episode's title fool you. Batman does not show up in this episode. This whole episode is a glorified April Fool's joke. The Teen Titans partake in April Fool's pranks with each other. Well, all except for Raven, who thinks that April Fool's pranks are pretty mean-spirited. Your parents! They're here, man! Well, where are they? They are just on the other side of the door. Mommy! Daddy! Your baby is coming! <laughs> April Fool's! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give X this. This <laughs> this was pretty funny. Alright, that was pretty good. <laughs> this is a good one. Although one thing bothers me. Why is it that Raven is not on board with this? This is the same girl who loves to celebrate Halloween, yet April Fools is too much for her? Okay. Okay. 
This episode made me realize that these people in the Teen Titans Go writing room can get away with a lot. There are a lot of messed up pranks that these characters inflict on each other. Whether it's Robin breaking Beast Boy's leg or Cyborg unleashing a wolf onto Starfire. Like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The story is predictable, obviously. But I will admit the gags were pretty effective. Especially the ending, it tricked the viewers into thinking that Robin will be Nightwing, Cyborg will join the Justice League, and Raven and Beast Boy will be husband and wife. Okay, they won't be husband and wife later down the line, but they will be boyfriend and girlfriend. April Fools! You guys thought I hated Frank! I love Frank! Alright, alright, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Oh my god, this is literally a fucking bottle episode. Great. Just as I predicted, we're stuck in a bottle for the duration of today's activities. Well, on the bright side, think of all the money we're saving. If this isn't a clear example of how cheap they are, I don't know what is. The Teen Titans get stuck in a literal bottle, and they spend the duration of the episode just being a glorified clip show episode, because according to them, they don't have enough money. Oh, look at Mr. Moneybags over here. Those things are expensive. But we've been doing great. We can afford a little change of scenery. You would think. Would you like to pay for the luxurious trip with your golden pirate treasure? Given the fact that this show is made to sell toys to kids, I'm pretty sure you motherfuckers have enough money to do something instead of wasting the viewer's time. This episode is awful. Bottom tier garbage. The whole reason for the suggestion box is to have a thoughtful way to address the flaws in the Teen Titans. Oh yeah, suggestion box. That's definitely gonna work out well. Fill out a form and put it in the suggestion box. Anonymous has suggested that the leader of the Titans, Robin, and that would be me, should teach more life lessons. Life lessons? That sounds so inspirational and life-affirming! Hate to break it to you, but you guys are on Cartoon Network, not PBS Kids. Robin wants to teach the Titans about money and equity. This episode is so boring. Boring! I mean, sure, if you want to learn about money from the Teen Titans Go crew, knock yourself out, I guess. But why would you want to do that? I thought this show's primary goal was to be a comedy. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, sure, it doesn't do that good a job, but at least they try sticking to it. The only funny part of the episode is when the Titans tried fixing up an apartment for the villains. Anyway, let's move on. And you're telling me kids like this show? Oh my god. Wow, there is nothing impressive about what you're doing. Please stop. That's very ironic coming from you, Raven. <laughs> ironic, isn't it? After a stupid competition, Raven and the rest of the Teen Titans turn into the League of Legs. And despite Raven telling them not to take advantage of the legs they have, what do you know, they take advantage of them and then they become evil. So now Raven has to stop them. I'm not a big fan of the whole League of Legs concept, mainly because it feels like the writers are trying to get their fetishes out, specifically when they focus on Raven. The power of quads, hammies, and calves can be intoxicating. Unchecked, that power can lead to bad things. But how could something bad look so good? Again, 15, maybe chill out with this? But like the amazing world of Gumball in its later seasons, the ending is the best part as Raven puts these little bastards in their place. It's 
In order to prevent Robin from eavesdropping on their conversations, the Titans start using a new language, and because he can't crack it, they decide to teach Robin, even though the whole purpose was to make sure he doesn't eavesdrop on their conversations. It's pay, it's pay at it's way I day out this day. Yo, why is this song so oddly catchy? <laughs> what the fuck? This episode is alright. I think it gets a little more interesting when it's revealed that the language they've been using belongs to an evil cult that's run by a pig. <laughs> what? What? And get this, the pig has an ulterior motive to take over the world, and it turns out that they've been brainwashing humans to build them a paradise for many years. We finally found Earth! We used your puny species to build us a paradise! The plan is almost complete, and the time nigh for us pigs to rise up and destroy mankind! I'm done. I'm, I can't... I, I'm... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if that's how you want to introduce the Illuminati to children, knock yourself out. Despite how stupid this episode is, it's pretty enjoyable for the most part. Okay, so I did some research and it turns out that the character Wally T is based on a real kid from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And get this, he's a big fan of the series. Okay. Okay. The Teen Titans meet a kid named Wally T, a diehard fan of Teen Titans Go, and it turns out that just by his mere presence, they have an incredible increase in strength and abilities, so they take advantage of Wally so they can get more fans. <sighs> okay. Alright. Mm -hmm. A Teen Titans Go fan, huh? I don't buy it. Tell me, Walter, do you like the Teen Titans or the Teen Titans? <sighs> as I thought. Makes sense. I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, animation-wise, there's really no comparison. Well, I don't care as long as you don't consider us garbage. Would you stop? It's another hater episode. It's on par with Let's Get Serious, The Return of Slade, and The Fourth Wall. Although it may not seem like it on the surface, there are some underlying implications here. Instead of making an adventure focusing on Wally T and the Teen Titans, it's another one of those episodes where they try to improve their show. And to me, that is so lame. Boo! They're still talking about how they want the show to get better and all of this shit, but they still stay the same at the end of the episode. And that's what makes this episode infuriating to me. It is fucking pathetic. And the fact that you're pulling this kid into your bullshit, it's just not cool at all. Another bottom tier garbage episode. So, would you guys mind if I shredded some sweet rails with you? Oh, yeah! Great idea! Not! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the opening of this episode reminds me of that South Park episode, You Got Effed in the A. Robin meets up with some guys on rollerblades. Are those things even cool anymore? Anyway, after being owned by them, he wants to get rollerblades of his own so that he can own them back and fulfill a dream that his father had. As a whole, the episode is alright. I think the Titans' rollerblade outfits look cool, I guess. But the plot itself reminds me of those lame sports movies. In fact, it reminds me of those two South Park episodes that have a similar premise. You're not really gonna go down that K-13 run, are you, Stan? Dude, I have to. Stan, you can't let that tag guy get to you. Screw him, dude. Dude, he's got Heather. You don't even know Heather! I know, I know, I just... Look, I can't explain it, but I have to do this. I'm not gonna die. I mean, how bad can the K-13 be? Okay. All right. We got served. So now, I guess, it's on. Stan, what the hell did you dance back for? I thought I was supposed to. Now you've got to compete against them in the dance competition on Saturday. Well, why? Because if you get served and serve them back, then it's on. Don't you know anything? But hey, at least the ride down Demon's tongue was pretty cool. And at least Robin got to prove to his parents that he fulfilled his dream. What's he doing? I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, Robin needs therapy. And fast.
this strange behavior is called... Chivalry! Chivalry is where dudes be gentlemen and do things for ladies, like give you our coats in open doors. Chivalry is dead. <laughs> Ain't that the goddamn truth? Then let us bring the pain to the brain! Whoa, 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 ladies, please! Allow us. Are you serious? What kind of gentlemen would we be if we didn't handle this ourselves? Okay, now you guys are just being unintentionally sexist. Does the chivalry entail the boys being easily apprehended and then saved by the ladies? Looks like it. Oh god, please don't be like boys versus girls all over again. The boys get kidnapped by the brain, so this leaves Raven and Starfire to assemble a group of girls so they can rescue them. They assemble Jinx, Rose, and Terra to get this job done. Like the last two-parter we discussed, the first part is mostly just setting up for the next part. But I will admit, it's nice to see these characters teaming up. And I will admit that Rose and Terra are a nice addition. And there were some pretty humorous moments of Robin relying on his future self to get him, Cyborg, and Beast Boy out of the cage. For the next part, the girls break into the brain's lair to save the boys. Meanwhile, the boys continue to rely on alternate versions of themselves to get out of the cage. This episode was pretty okay. We get to see the girls using their powers to get through the guards to rescue the boys. Then it leads to a very predictable moment where the girls get captured, and it turns out that Tara told the brain that they were coming. I mean, it really shouldn't be that shocking to you. This is the same girl you trapped in a trash hole for the past two seasons. Obviously, she would get revenge on your ass, especially since this girl hasn't been subtle about it. But I'll also have my revenge. <laughs> That's the dance I'll be doing on the Titans' graves! Excuse me. These fools don't even see the double cross that's coming. <laughs> The fight scene with the girls was pretty cool too, and the side plot was just regurgitating the same joke ad nauseum. It was funny at first, but then they just overdid it. An alright episode overall. This is how Napoleon stands! That is why I am here, to teach you the importance of history! Man, we don't want to learn about no history. Can't you guys just... Do stupid shit for 10 minutes instead of, I don't know, trying to teach your audience something. Because 9 times out of 10, you suck at doing it. Dude, the structure of this episode is a copy and paste of the Fairy Tales episode. Robin tries to do something with the Titans, and each and every single one of them interrupts him so they can tell their own version of the story. Instead of Fairy Tales, for this episode, it's flipped to historical events. The only difference is, unlike that episode, Robin gets a chance to tell his story. Robin talks about France, Raven talks about Egypt, and for some reason, Starfire talks about Abraham Lincoln. Which, I, I, I don't even know why. You're a fucking alien. What would you know about- <laughs> And finally, Beast Boy and Cyborg talk about the first moon landing. There's nothing to say about this one. It's just very loosely reciting history, but with Teen Titans Go characters. The Titans train Beast Boy to be a ninja just like them, so they can take a MacGuffin. Spoiler alert, it's a sandwich. Why, ew! It's rolling everywhere, are you this hungry? This is another decent episode. I like ninja movies, and this episode does a good job of utilizing the concept. They utilize stealth, throwing stars, blades, hiding in plain sight, the usual. And it leads to a pretty nice climax where Beast Boy ends up beating everyone's ass. This all sounds awesome, but puffy sleeves and embroidered names don't come cheap. Aren't you guys worried about wasting money? Why wouldn't we want to waste money? I don't know, so we have some later? But the later is not until the later. Currently, it is the now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that made me laugh. Because that's the same logic my friend used to have. Instead of worrying about it later, they instead focus on it now. I know, but aren't we gonna get old one day? Yeah, but later! And it's the now, right now! Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see where this episode is going. 
Because the Titans, except Raven, are so reckless with their money and health, this negatively impacts their future selves. So they decide to travel back to the past to warn their younger selves about the choices they're making now. Yeah, this episode really does beat you over the head with its message, but I will give it credit that the episode does teach a valuable lesson about taking care of yourself now, like eating healthy, being active, and saving up money. That's good. Even though the younger Titans don't approve of this. That's bad. But hey, it does lead to a funny ass moment where the old Titans beat the shit out of the younger Titans. That's good. But then it ends with the younger Titans killing their future selves. That's bad. Oh, this is the most unnecessary crossover ever. Mojo Jojo teleports to the Teen Titans Go universe so that he can take over the world with an army of monkeys. And Cyborg and Beast Boy, being the idiots that they are, follow him because they think he looks cool. While that's going on, the Powerpuff Girls and the remaining Teen Titans have a competition to see which superhero team is the best. Well, I am Chico, and that's Chewy and Chappy. What's wrong with these guys? They got rebooted, like you. But to be honest, I'd say their reboot is far better than your reboot. It's party time! <laughs> Some people say that this is the best episode in the series, and I guess compared to the rest, it is technically the best one, but that's not a high bar to begin with. If there's one thing I will give this episode credit for, it's that the Powerpuff Girls act like they're 1998 selves. The problem with the 2016 reboot is that the characters don't act like themselves, and they were butchered hard. For this episode, they retain their personalities since they have to be the straight men to the Titans' bullshit. Well, I am Chico, and that's Chewy and Chappy. What's wrong with these guys? It says, help, monkey. <gasps> they are in the danger. Ugh, that's what we're trying to tell you. And you've come here for our help because you are tiny, helpless babies. All I have to do is extract a DNA sample, then cross-reference the data with all known organic life forms and their patterns. Give me that. Hmm. They're at the zoo. I stand up to the zoo! <laughs> your dumb competition but i won't lie the jokes get really repetitive with the teen titans acting condescending towards the powerpuff girls because they're children even though they're children too but whatever but at least the side plot with beast boy cyborg and mojo jojo was pretty okay for the most part Overall, it's a mid-episode. It's not a great crossover, though, because they're crossing over two of the worst shows of Cartoon Network at the time. Wow, really? No wonder Mojo came here. This place is the worst. Well, it's not like your show is any better. At least this show is still going. Your show got cancelled. The Teen Titans are stranded on a deserted island. And this is a story that's going to drag out for the next five episodes. I liked the animation for the intro. I thought that looked nice. Raven going crazy over Pi was kind of funny, I guess. As a whole, this episode was... something, I guess. The thing I've noticed about this episode is that there's a laugh track in here for some reason. In other news, coconut futures are up. President Coconut had this to say on the matter. There's coconut on... Aw, oh, man, I wanted to hear what President Coconut had to say. I love that guy. Ah! President Coconut is flushing this coconut country down the coconut toilet. <laughs> All right, what the fuck, man? It's not like it's parodying Scooby-Doo. It's just in here for no reason at all. Anyway, they try building a rocket with some fuel that Beast Boy found. And just when they're about to leave, Beast Boy stupidly presses the launch button. Right, what the fuck, man? But it doesn't matter because the gasoline that Beast Boy found was unstable, so they would have died in that rocket anyway. Next episode.
Since they're still stuck on the island, Robin forces the Titans to be in teams of two for this stupid competition he made up. It's a glorified parody of Survivor. By being super petty and forming alliances and backstabbing. Always backstabbing. Stab, stab, stabity, back, back, stab. This is survival. Oh, yes. I will have a side of maggots with my beetle. Another grasshopper. Oh, why not? Let's indulge. Your protein. I swear, with each episode, Robin continues to lose his goddamn mind. This episode is a little better than the first one. I got a few giggles out of this one, like this shot for example. It's funny that the boys have their eyes closed, yet the girls don't cover their eyes. <laughs> uh, it's so stupid. That's so fucking stupid. And the final act of the episode gets kind of interesting when Robin summons what's essentially a parody of the Predator to hunt down the other Titans. So yeah, it's a little better than the first. I'm about to get down on these fluffy scrambled coconuts. Save room for some awesome coconut waffles. And do not forget my famous coconut syrup. Oh. I am loving this coconut juice. Got that good coconut pulp in it? You want some shredded coconut on that, bro? Keep that coconut coming. Mm. Oh, thank God I'm not playing a drinking game because I will be dead in the first 1 minute and 55 seconds. Because they're sick and tired of coconuts, the Titans decide to find a new food source on the other side of the island. This is another episode that's better than the last, especially when they throw in dinosaurs into the mix. Then it ends with the Teen Titans getting ready to prove which dinosaur is the best by having them fight each other. And I will admit, this episode does have some chuckle-worthy moments here and there. Open door policy! Open the door! We need to hide in here! It's our only chance! See? They'll never get us in here. Oh, good boy! You did it! Hmm. It's okay. What? No. Seriously, get out of here. Uh-huh. What? No! A birthday party without a cake? You know, football with a face on it. If I didn't have you to talk to, I'd go crazy. Okay, they really need to end this five-part special because it's clear that these characters are losing their goddamn minds. Since the Titans are still stuck on the island, Robin grants the others crazy desires by forcing them to step into a bush. Okay, you know what? They're just inhaling weed. That's my headcanon. It's a decent one. There were some pretty interesting scenarios like Cyborg becoming a rapper, Starfire turning into a kitty, Raven wishing that the team could just go home, and I guess Beast Boy eating a cake. It's a simple one. The Teen Titans decide that it's about time to get the hell off this island, but when they try to get off, they realize that the island is not what it seems. This is when it's revealed that this whole thing was done by Control Freak. But why? I was starting to get bored watching you in your normal environment. Living room, kitchen, living room, kitchen! It's so repetitive and predictable! That's what I fucking said! That is what I said! This episode is like the fourth wall. They blatantly say that the Island Adventure miniseries was just made for the sake of getting ratings. Alright, but your audience won't be happy. Audience? <laughs> this show wasn't just for me. I was hoping to bring in a huge audience with this ridiculous stunt. And I did. <laughs> fucking writers just can't help yourselves, can ya? At least this five-part miniseries amounted to something in the end. And we do have a pretty good fight sequence, as the Titans fight every single one of their enemies throughout the series. And when they get their asses whooped, they rely on the island adventure extras to help. Why would people who despise 
Jesus devotes so much of the time and energy to watching us. Girl, have you been on the internet? Brutal, brutal stuff. Why are people so mean? I don't deserve this. Well, keep in mind the opinions of people on the internet aren't accurate indicators of popularity or success. Speaking of fourth wall breaking, I want you guys to remember this because the show brings this up quite frequently. You'll never believe this! Let me in! First, do the booty scooty. Come on, do I have to? Well, you ain't coming in till you feel the shame of that booty scooty, son! Okay, don't you dare bring a piece of media that's actually good down to your level. Wait a minute. Don't tell me this episode will be a parody of the Goonies. Okay, this section isn't in the script. When I first started watching this series, I had a feeling that maybe this show wouldn't be as cringeworthy as the Powerpuff Girls 2016 reboot. I would like to amend that statement. Okay, so the premise for this episode is parodying the Goonies. A bunch of rich buyers plan on destroying the Teen Titans Tower so they can build a mall. The Titans have to stop them, but they don't have any money. So they go on a dangerous quest to get some money. Yeah, basically a parody of the Goonies. I haven't mentioned it yet, but this show loves to say that its primary demographic is children, yet they're parodying shows and movies that children most likely haven't seen before. Parodying Scooby-Doo, The Goonies, Survivor, and numerous other stuff I can reference. Overall, this episode is okay. It's just a watered-down Goonies. Remember when Beast Boy said this in the original show? Hmm, maybe you should call me Beast Man from now on. Yeah, well, I think that's the premise for this episode. They're not ghosts, girl. Spirit animals enrich your life experience. They teach you important stuff like how to get by in this big crazy world. Whoa, whoa, whoa! While spirit animals are great, they aren't necessarily for everyone. I'd hate to see you saddled with so much debt. And in this economy, woo! Personally, I think spirit animals have just become big business. Focus more on sports and partying than education. Now, with the money you'd spend on a spirit animal, have you instead considered investing in, say, a rental property? Or what about looking into a trade school? God, this is definitely an analogy for college. Beast Boy finally grows armpit hair, so he tries to find his spirit animal. And despite Cyborg's many warnings, he decides that a bear should be his spirit animal. And what do you know, he ends up paying the price for it. I thought this episode was <laughs> pretty funny. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. I got a couple of laughs out of this one. Whoa, check out those bears! Nice! That's what I want my spirit animal to be! But the cost of being a bear is astronomical. Maybe you should find a two-year community spirit animal, like that old donkey. We all are, but how are you going to pay for this? I got the government loan of salmon and honey. Ah, oh, these spirit animals. Man, all they do is party, play sports, and steal picnic baskets! You mean picnic baskets? That's what you get for convincing people to spend thousands of dollars just to learn things they could figure out for free, leaving them with a mountain of debt and a useless piece of paper that reads diploma. They're peddling a dream that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so yeah, this episode was pretty humorous, especially with its analogy to college and growing up. And the Titans playing football against the Bears was pretty fun to watch too. Although I do feel it's kind of weird that Cyborg is lecturing Beast Boy about this kind of thing. I kind of expected Robin to do that. Is this what modern life has done to you? Made you soft? Not long ago, we didn't have all these modern conveniences. Every day was a hardship, but it made people strong and self-reliant. Robin, you're a kid. Quit talking like you're a 50-year-old man. Robin forces the Titans to be in a 1900s western adventure, aka the Oregon Trail. This episode reminds me of that Amazing World of Gumball episode, The Pumpkin, and that American Dad episode, First Do No Farm. It's just one member of the group forcing the others to do something they didn't consent to. 
So, we're in Oregon. Not yet! It's only 2,000 miles that way! Are you crazy? That's gonna take us days! It won't take a couple of days. It'll take several months, as the rugged pioneers didn't have cars or magic portals. Oh, oh, no, Outside of that hilarious moment, I don't care for this episode that much. As I said, it reminds me of the pumpkin and first do no farm. The only difference is that everybody dies in this episode. And no, I'm not kidding. Everybody dies a slow and painful death. Uh-oh. <laughs> While Beast Boy is pooping himself, would anyone like to look around? Why, And Should we not help him? Ooh, sorry, that's not an option on the numbered list. Beast Boy has died. <laughs> Poor. Can't get any worse, right? Starfire has died. <laughs> well, Raven got the measles and up and died. And Cyborg Boy, he cried and cried till he caught a cold. And he was dead. The first and second half of this episode was boring as fuck. But the third act does make up for it. Also, the episode was trying to be educational. There is one thing I've learned. Everybody dies on the Oregon Trail. Well, that's what happens on the Oregon Trail. It's super boring, you hunt a little, and then everyone in your party dies a horrible death. Wait a minute, wasn't there an episode of American Dad that had the same premise as this one? Hmm, probably my imagination. Who's the best kitty? Give me a little kissy. Oh, I'm loving these snuggles, yo. And I love you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Who loves you? Wow. The first couple of minutes of this episode are pleasant. I can't wait to see something ruin it. There it is. The Teen Titans get sick and tired of being heroes, so they decide to become a group of supervillains called the Legion of Doom. It's a typical switching roles episode, but unlike the last episode, this was fun. What are you fucking gay? No, I'm not a homosexual for thinking that this is a fun episode. It was interesting seeing the Titans be evil, they even get new designs. Well, except for Starfire. She still has the same evil design she had when she was Starfire the Terrible. You know what's ironic? Despite them being heroes, I think they do a good job of being villains. That way, everything they do from now on is justified because they're not good guys. But hey, you can't get everything in one go, can ya? No, this is all staged. You know pro wrestling is fake, right? They're not even touching each other! Why are you trying to ruin this for us? Yeah, that's more Raven or Robin's thing. Cyborg tries to teach the Titans about real wrestling, which is just old school wrestling. And after giving it a shot, the Teen Titans decide to do pro wrestling since it was so much fun. You know what? A pretty good wrestling episode. I like the different personas that the characters make up for themselves, and I think it does a good job spoofing wrestling. And the wrestling match at the end was pretty fun to watch. But too bad South Park and regular show did it better. The Teen Titans try to play a board game together, but then they end up getting sucked into said board game. Sure, this episode does remind me of the master from the amazing world of Gumball, but I still think it's one of the better episodes of the series. I like how they switched up the art style to represent a Dungeons and Dragons like aesthetic. I like the redesigns of the characters, and it has a lot of humorous moments. Two arms, friends! Prepare to taste the Tin Man's Warhammer! Rah! <laughs> well, I can't attack him! Of course you can't. You have to roll the dice to attack. Really? Uh, another one? This dice is broken. I cast a distraction spell? You're only level one, so not your best spell. Now your rules are taking the magic out of magic. Overall, it's a really fun Dungeons & Dragons parody. Mm, uh, mm -hmm. Loving the death party! 
why are you guys referencing Charlie Brown? Because the Teen Titans are dancing like Charlie Brown characters, <laughs> I still can't believe they're referencing Charlie Brown. Raven tries to teach them how to dance, but when she can't do it, she relies on a dance demon. And what do you know? They end up having rhythm. That's good. But then they disobey the dance demon's rules when they read other portions of the book. That's bad. So now the dance demon turns them into his slaves. So now Raven has to save them. An alright episode, but the best part of the episode is the dance battle at the end. It was really fun to watch and I like how Raven saves them by doing the overbite, a dance that she criticized at the beginning of the episode. There is no plot in this one. They literally just have the actors dub over pre-existing footage from the original show. Skip. 